Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk a little bit about the atmosphere on Mars. It turns out that the atmosphere on Mars, in some respect, is very similar to the atmosphere on Venus. The first two components of the atmosphere have about the same approximate values for Mars as for Venus. 95.3% of the atmosphere is carbon dioxide, and then the next uh, most common component, nitrogen, is 2.6%, very similar to what we see on Venus. The big difference, of course, is that on Venus, the pressure, the atmospheric pressure, is about 90 times the atmospheric pressure on the Earth, where the atmospheric pressure on Mars is less than 1% the atmospheric pressure on the Earth. So in that respect, they're hugely different. Some other components we find, the third most common component is argon, which is the same for the Earth. The third one on Earth is argon to about the same amount. The Earth has about 1% argon and, and uh, Mars has about 1.6% argon. The fourth component is carbon monoxide at 0.13%. And then interestingly enough, there's a very tiny amount of water vapor in the atmosphere at about 0.03%. It's probably mostly in frozen form, but it's there. Now, the atmospheric pressure on Mars changes a lot throughout the day and night towards from one location to another, and it also varies a lot with seasonal changes. As we explained in the previous video, when the polar caps expand, it's at the expense of atmosphere being pulled out of the atmosphere, or I should say carbon dioxide being pulled out of the atmosphere through freezing it and then snowing down onto the surface. But at various locations, for example, the location of the Pathfinder, we found that over a span of 20 sols, sols is a, a Martian day, so which is about 25 hours or 24, well, about 24 and a half hours, uh, Earth hours. So you can see that the atmospheric pressure can change as, as much from 6.65 to 6.85 just over a period of 20 days. The variation from night to day is even more severe because it gets so cold at night that the air becomes more dense and then in the daytime the air becomes less dense because of the heating effect of the sun. And notice that the difference between day and night is as much as from 690 to 740 Pascal at a particular site. Not sure where they measured that one from. Then where the uh, Curiosity rover is located at, notice on Sol 31 the pressure varied from 695 to 800, that's from, from night to day. And then on Sol 93, it changed from 775 to 865. Notice that the pressure increased quite a bit. That's because we're getting into the springtime. The ice is beginning to melt. The carbon dioxide is beginning to sublimate. Well, I shouldn't say melt because on Mars everything sublimates. So the, the carbon dioxide sublimates and replenishes the atmosphere and the atmospheric pressure goes up. So you can see there's quite a bit of difference between uh, these two periods. That's only 60, 62 sols apart. Now, at the average elevation of Mars, the pressure is about 650. Notice that it's, it tends to be a lot, quite a bit lower than all these other sites that we've been mentioning, because typically when uh, we send probes to Mars, we tend to land them in the lower regions towards the northern end of the, the northern side of the equator versus the highlands here, because there's a lot more interesting things to be found there. And so there are lower elevations with higher pressure, but on the average elevation of Mars, the pressure is about 650 pascals, 6.36 millibars, which is about 0.6%, the atmospheric pressure on Earth. There's still a lot of atmosphere now. The, the lack of atmosphere compared to the Earth is one of the biggest challenges to land spacecraft on the surface of Mars. There's been just about as many failures as there have been successes, especially in the early years, because by the time you, a spacecraft travels through the atmosphere, it hasn't slowed down that much. They're typically still traveling at nearly 1,000 miles per hour by the time they get close enough to, set, to uh, deploy the parachutes. And they have to be constructed in very special ways so they wouldn't be ripped apart to shreds at these high velocities. So it's, it makes it very difficult to land spacecraft, and many spacecraft have crash-landed because of that problem. Now, even though there's such low pressure, and there's not as much compared to the Earth, there's still 25,000 trillion kilograms, or 25 trillion tons of atmosphere on Mars. So there's still a fair amount of atmosphere there, but of course, compared to Venus and Earth, it's far less. At the top of Mount Olympus, 
the pressure is down to 30 pascals. Now, Mount Olympus is a huge mountain. It's about 16 miles tall, so that makes it about 25 kilometers, 26 kilometers tall. So it's way up there in the atmosphere at the top, and the atmospheric pressure is down to 30 pascals when the average pressure at the average height or the average elevation is 650. So it's, there's virtually no um, no pressure left at that elevation. And then at the lowest point on the planet, that Hellas Planitia, also sometimes called Hellas Basin, which is right here, which we believe is a, a huge impact crater from way in the beginning when the planet was formed, and that depression is about six miles below the average elevation of the planet, so or of the surrounding area there, I should say. And because of that, it's so low that the atmospheric pressure is as high as 1155 pascals, so almost double what it is on the average for the planet. The density of the atmosphere is about 3 grams per cubic meter, so that you would need about 10 cubic meters to have one ounce of atmosphere. So there's very little atmosphere in that respect compared to the Earth, which is about 1,000 grams per cubic meter. So there's far less density on Mars compared to the Earth. And if you want to compare the pressure on average, the atmospheric pressure on average on Mars to what it's like on the Earth, you have to go to an elevation of 35 kilometers, that's about 22 miles above sea level, for the atmospheric pressures to be equated. 35 kilometers up is about four times the height of Mount Everest, and you already know how hard it is to breathe when you get to the top of Mount Everest because the air pressure is so low. Imagine going four times as high, the air pressure is so small there that it then compares to the air pressure on Mars. So that gives you a good idea as to why, uh, uh, how low the, the pressure is on Mars. Now, another big contributing factor to the temperature on Mars is the fact that there's so little atmosphere. Even though much of it is carbon dioxide, we know carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, there's only so much of it. So in the daytime, it gets relatively warm because of the sunshine, but at night the temperatures plummet and there can be as much as 100 degrees Kelvin difference between daytime and nighttime, simply because the atmosphere is just not capable of hanging out to the heat. So the temperatures plummet at night and rise quite a bit in the daytime kind of the way it is on, on the Moon. The Moon has no atmosphere at all, so in that respect, Mars and the Moon have very similar features in that in the daytime it gets very hot on the Moon, and at night it gets frigidly cold. Not a lot of difference on Mars, but a little bit of atmosphere does temper it just a little bit, but not a lot. And so that kind of gives you a basic overview of the atmosphere of Mars. So, it, yeah, the continent of Mars, if you look at the map, the whole southern region is the land mass and the whole northern region is, so to speak, the ocean. And once upon a time, the, there was probably an ocean at the northern end and just land mass on the southern end, except for this one place. This must have been just a deep lake right there. But for the rest, yeah, it's very different. You don't have the continents like you have on Venus, relatively speaking, or on the Earth. Yeah, it's very lopsided distributed. How thick is the atmosphere? Well, in terms of mass, it's three grams, so a tenth of an ounce per cubic meter, as opposed to the Earth is a kilogram per cubic meter, so it's, it's hugely different. And pressure-wise, it's less than point... How thick from the Oh, how thick in that respect, how high does it go up? Yeah, I didn't do uh, any instruction on that. Uh, it does go up quite a bit, just like with the Earth, it goes up in about... 30 to 60 miles at the top of the atmosphere, so it does up, go up quite high, but it's very, very tenuous at that height. Yeah. What's on, Earth? on Earth, it goes up to about 65 miles is considered the start of space, but the atmosphere continues on to about two, 300 miles up. Again, very tenuous. So yeah, on Mars, it doesn't go nearly as high as on the Earth.